This is it. I finally finished my Colgan. It went from breadboard taped on a piece of wood to custom 3D printed 2.5 kilo 6 stage automatic gun. This thing is a beast. Still running on Arduino Nano. There are no huge capacitors, instead the coils are driven directly from batteries. This means that they don't have as much power, but it also means I don't have to charge anything. So I can actually shoot in semi-automatic mode, or even full automatic if I bothered to actually program that. Still, I need beefy batteries that are able to provide about 60 amps, so I have hidden them where I could. One is hidden in the stock, and the other one is in the front handle, together with a small battery that handles all the low power stuff. Both of the big batteries have three cells at 1400 milliamp powers and are connected in series. They also have their own switch, if we can call this a switch. And on this panel there is also an OLED screen, and it looks good. And that's pretty much all it does. <laughs> uh, the battery status on it is not very precise, and the rest is just some debugging info. Anyways, on the side there is a couple of switches. First one is just on-off switch, nothing interesting. Uh, next one is for flashlight, because why not? In movies they always have flashlight on guns, so why shouldn't I? And the last switch is for laser, which I broke when I was soldering it, so we will just pretend that it works. On top of that you might notice there is a room to put the main switch. But you might also notice there is a rail, which actually has the same dimensions as uh, rails on real guns, so I can actually touch scopes or sights. Uh, not that they would be very useful, but you know, I just thought it would be cool. I have already mentioned that the gun has six coils, but I would also like to touch on exactly how it works. So six coils, seven optical sensors between each one, so surely I'm using one of those. Actually, I'm not. I'm only detecting if the projectile is in the very first coil to make sure that it came out of the magazine. Uh, and for those of you wondering, uh, there is no mechanical lever you know, that pushes the projectile out of the magazine. It's pulled directly by an electromagnetic force created by the coil. I was surprised myself that it actually worked, even when the magazine was full and the spring was compressed all the way down. But back to my main point, uh, once the gun knows that there is a projectile in a chamber, the remaining coils just go off in a sequence with calibrated times for each coil, and uh, with this method I actually get the best results. In my case the last two coils are actually broken, so it's really just a 4 stage coil gun, and I couldn't be bothered fixing them, because I already spent so much time on this project, and it just works well enough. Also, the Arduino is separated with octocouplers in my case, which isn't really necessary, but somewhere along the troubleshooting process I have installed them and then I never just took them off. <laughs> I have actually had quite a few fails building this. Numerous times I wasn't able to turn a particular coil off, so it would just get really hot melting everything around it while I was furiously unplugging the battery. <laughs> Then at one point, when playing with the software, I managed to make the gun fire the other way around. I mean, how does this even happen? I also just had some ideas that flat out did not work. I thought I could fit one of the big batteries in the handle, and that turned out to be as ergonomic as a huge potato. And this was a point where I decided I'll just google what a gun looks like. And then I realized that most guns actually have stock, because before I thought this is what a gun looks like. And so I was building a gun without knowing what a gun looks like. Just think about it for a second. Yet another bright idea of mine was to power everything with just a single 22.2 volt battery. Now this might have actually worked if I used, you know, switch mode power supply with decent heatsink. I however decided to use linear regulator. And oh boy, well, it just got really hot without even any load. And I realized that maybe doing some basic math would have saved me a lot of time. And I just decided to use separate battery instead. Also about the magazine, the spring inside is made out of music wire, which is generally used for springs. 
but at first I wanted to make it out of, well, I wanted to 3D print it. And I have seen some other people make it work, but, you know, PLA has its limitations and I could only fit three bullets in. Uh, maybe with a better design it might be possible, but it just didn't work for me. Now let's get into the build. First, I started by taking off everything useful from my prototype. That involves taking the MOSFETs off of their wooden heat sinks. Off of their wooden heat sinks? I have made four additional coils. And with all the coils ready, I was able to mount them on the frame. The frame is L-shaped aluminium profile. It needs a couple of holes for the coils and they need to be tapped with M3 tap. Don't worry about the precise dimensions because those are documented in an instructable, which is in the description. The coils need to be in a straight line, so I have a tube running through them, which will be removed later. Now, despite my flawless craftsmanship, not every hole was exactly aligned, so a lot of the coils are fastened with just two or three screws. Beautiful. Next up, the MOSFET driver boards. As the name suggests, these drive the big MOSFETs, which then drive the coils. I went with MIC4422. And I have made six of these boards, one for each coil. And the schematic and board design is also available to download. I decided to make the PCBs myself, but this could easily be made on a prep board as it is just a few components. Also, the heating don't need to be this large. I'm just compensating. With the boards done, it was time to put them in place and there is no better way to mount them than hot glue. Hell yeah! I glued them in like this and you could say, it's beautiful. Okay, but for real now, I should have soldered the coils in first and uh, also the coils are still missing the flyback diodes uh, and those are actually meant to be soldered directly on the wires, so no, it's not mistake in my design okay and you can see me soldering here some bulky diodes and i have actually changed those like four times when i was prototyping and i actually ended up using one n four double oh seven and not just one but four of them in parallel for each coil next up were the optical sensors they haven't changed at all since the prototype so i started by installing the infrared leds and phototransistors and connecting them, connected them with resistors for now. I then decided to focus again on the driver boards and connected them to the Arduino. I'm using flat cables which actually ended up looking quite nice. Next I have wired the sensors as well and I started by drilling tiny hole underneath every single one for tidy cable management. Then I have soldered the signal wires using a flat cable once again. On top of that, each sensor also needs 5 volts, so I kind of ran like power lines across the openings and connected everything through. We are not done with the wiring yet, the main battery needs to be connected to all of the driver boards, so that's what I did next. For this I'm using a 14 gauge silicon wire, and this one is EXTRA THICK! I also had to set my iron from 355 to 380 degrees Celsius and uh, do yourself a favor and get a uh, thick solder because you will need a lot of it. I didn't just solder the wires onto the boards but I have also plated the traces with a generous amount of solder. And once they were all connected I have also added a temporary XT60 connector for testing. I have already mentioned that we are using two batteries, uh, one 3.7V LiPo for low power stuff and 2.2.2V LiPo for the coils. Now simple enough, but we actually need three different voltages. We need 5V for Arduino, sensors, laser, flashlight and backlight, 12V uh, for MOSFET drivers and 22.2V for coils. Now for 5 and 12 volts I'm boosting up the 3.7 volt battery. The 5 volts can be soldered to the 5 volt line which we have made for the sensors. And the 12 volt has a spot on every single driver board. So I have just daisy chained those together. The 22.2 volts is connected directly to the battery so 
now we just need to actually connect all the grounds together. Now it would be a good time to test everything, but we are still missing a trigger, which is really just a micro switch and a resistor. In order to test anything, the main battery actually needs to be connected in series, so I have made uh, this special cable. We are now able to test it and see if everything works. And if it does, you can go ahead and make uh, an actual trigger and the magazine loading mechanism, which is also detailed in the tutorial. But you might be thinking, I don't have any ammo, how am I supposed to test it? And that's actually a really good point. Well, let me just show you how to do the ammo and also magazine. Well, let's start with the magazine, as it is the best if you are actually testing with the magazine itself. It is just a simple 3D model that doesn't require any support material or anything. It's the spring that makes this complicated. You have seen me try 3D printed spring, but we are not going to be making that. Instead I have the spring or music wire, which is 0.8mm thick. And I'm going to wind it around this wooden stick. I chose this stick because it can be easily inserted into the magazine. So if we wrap a spring around it, it should be able to fit too. So make sure you secure one end of the music wire. And as you are winding, you must always keep a pressure on the wire. And um, around 5 loops should be good enough. And uh, once you release the pressure, the wire will spring out, which is absolutely normal. So then you actually have to take a pliers and bend it to the final shape. You will also need to stretch it so it's approximately as long as the magazine itself. You can now insert the spring into the magazine followed by this 3D printed slider and it should be good to go. Let's focus on the ammo now. It's really just an 8mm steel rod with a sharp tip. Now the right way to do this would be to use the lathe. With that said, I don't have a lathe. I do however have a power drill, a dremel tool, so you know we are going to use that. We are also going to need a cutoff wheel for the dremel and uh, sandpaper, I'm using 120 grit I think. And we can pretty much make any shape we want. Now I don't know whether this is stupid or genius, so just let me know what you think in the comments. With everything done, you can test the gun. And if you are not like me, then it should actually work. Well, if everything is working, then it's time to make the 3D printed cover. It's a lot of files and some of them are quite large. Uh, they might not fit on every printer. I personally used CR10, which was able to print everything. Uh, I'm using a regular PLA and I would suggest to actually print in the color that the parts are supposed to be in. It cuts down on the post-processing time, if there even needs to be any post-processing. All STL files I've provided are in correct orientation and there is also a spreadsheet with print settings for every single part. I'm not really going to go into details of finishing the prints, as I don't feel like I'm qualified. They really look quite terrible. I mean, I ran out of white spray paint, so I decided to use acrylic paint instead. So yeah, that's the kind of terrible we are talking about here. I actually tried doing the same finish as I did on my electric skateboard but just try it, that's really the keyword here. I have also tried weathering, but no, no, we are not even gonna talk about that. Well, at least it's easy to assemble together. I mean, relatively speaking. Uh, if you followed my instructable, then you are only missing these two holes on the side, and a couple of components need to be tapped with M3 tap. Here, 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 and here. Who taps M3s into 3D printed parts anyway? Seriously. Well, I do Angus, and it actually works. It makes the assembly really simple. Why the hell is this guy hating? Also, the top part with switches and screen is actually three separate pieces that must be glued together. 
I would suggest epoxy, but super glue might work too. Okay, and now comes the tedious wiring part. Uh, we need to run cables to the LEDs, to the flashlight, laser and OLED screen. Let me just start with the flashlight, as the model was designed around the flashlight that I just had laying around. So if you are building this, I would suggest just printing another file that is available that doesn't have a mounting for a flashlight and uh, just ignore this. Anyways, the blue LEDs are connected directly to 5 volts. The laser and flashlight are also connected to the 5 volts, but they also have each a switch in series as well. The OLED screen has its own 4-pin connector and the small LiPo battery has the last switch connected. I have made sure that everything can be disconnected by using pin header connectors on everything. Don't skip this step. You really need to be able to take it apart, because once you put it together, it's not going to work. It never does. I don't know why, but every time you put something together, it just stops working. We are almost done with the wiring, but do you remember the janky cable we have made for testing? Yeah, we can't really use it anymore, since one of the batteries needs to be in the front handle, another in the stock, we also need to add a main switch, and on top of all that, we want to be able to take everything apart, so it is getting quite a bit complicated. So I actually made diagram to show you how this main power cable needs to be made. Now make sure you start with the handle and stock, as the two wires need to be pushed through first. With this cable done, go ahead and test it one more time, and the gun can finally be assembled. Alright, looking good! I haven't really addressed the blue stripes yet, and that's because of a reason. I'm not a designer as you can tell, and I just thought that they would look cool. Uh, and if you look from far away, they do look kind of cool, I guess. Uh, but as you get closer and closer, it just gets worse and worse. Uh, I have done horrible masking job and there is overspray everywhere, so if you are building this, just don't put the stripes on, I guess, or just do a good job, but just don't follow what I did. Just use common sense or something, I don't know what that is. Okay, you can close the video now, I'm just going to talk about a software which nobody cares about, so I'll give you a second. Okay, now that I deterred everyone, but the biggest nerds... We need to hack the Pentagon. 
Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm really going to talk about the software. <laughs> there is really not much to talk about, except for hacking Pentagon. I have provided two sketches, one is for calibration and the other is for actual use. So well, let's start with the calibration. On top of the sketch there is a variable called the base time with six values and each of those values represent time in microseconds for how long will each coil be on. The first is always zero uh, as the first coil works differently than the others. And when calibrating for the first time, you want to actually zero all of them, except for the second one. Once you fire, on your OLED screen, uh, the coiled 5 reading will actually be showing you the time it took for the projectile to travel through the last coil. And we want to get this time as low as possible, because the lower the time, the faster the bullet is traveling. You can also read these values through a serial port, but that section of the code is commented out, so we'll need to uncomment it. So you just need to adjust this value until you get the smallest possible time consistently, and then you can move on to the next one. I'm personally getting around 2700 uh, microseconds with my foil co coils functioning, but when I had all six of them working, I was able to even get under 2000 microseconds. So those are roughly the values you should be getting. Once you have all the values calibrated, you just need to copy them from the calibration sketch to the normal sketch, upload it to your Arduino, and you're good to go. Okay, that about wraps it up. I know the gun has a little bit of an inconsistent look since I was still learning a lot of the features in Fusion 360 and I'm not very imaginative. So, in fact, I just googled sci-fi gun and pretty much co copied what I saw. Um, doesn't look too bad in my opinion, but let me know what you think in the comments. I've also noticed that Elon Musk and his boring company released their flamethrower, uh, which looks a bit similar, despite the fact that I designed mine uh, way before the flamethrower was even shown. Uh, maybe I also just googled sci-fi gun and like, who am I to judge? <laughs> Okay, I'm really going off topic here. Uh, as I said, there is an instructable uh, with all of the files and detailed instructions available. And uh, please subscribe for more quality content and like if you enjoyed. See you for now.